Welcome back. We're going to get to the Saints win over the Eagles in a second. But first, Chiefs wide receiver Sammy Watkins makes an impressive one-handed catch yesterday. Man, forget the catch. I'm so glad that Sammy Watkins was on the field. Yes. Man, that was, I watch that report every week. Actives, inactives. Because, now you're talking about a dangerous football team. Kansas City with Sammy Watkins, his ability to be able to catch, play in the slot, and also run some reverses. Oh, man, it was great to see. When he's the and by third, the way, that was a pretty good catch. And when he's the third weapon on a team, that's a oh, hell of a... Chargers, awesome. Pats, Keenan Allen, Juke, Stephon Gilmore. Runs free for a 43-yard touchdown. And from this moment forward, it was a disaster. In this moment, it looked like we are going to need a shootout. Touchdown one way, touchdown the other way. Pats came back and scored. Chargers didn't do anything on offense after this until garbage time. But it was time. a good juke. A great move by Keenan Allen. They set him up. Phillip Rivers helped him with a little pump fake there. Stephon Gilmore is playing some outstanding football. All one of the best corners in the NFL. He gets him on that play. But at the end of the day, we know who. We know who gets the last laugh. Saints Eagles, Marshawn Lattimore climbs the ladder. Big interception in the second quarter. This, I know we're about to talk about it. This is probably the biggest play of the game. I know it happened early, but the, th this came right after the breeze fumble that they recovered. And this was, I mean, the Eagles could have really put their foot on their throats. Lattimore had an outstanding game, and this got him going. Doug Peterson called a great play here. They had slipped Zach Ertz down the sideline. You can see Nick Foles' feet, they were not clean. He couldn't step into the throw to be able to flight it in front of him, throws it behind him. Lattimore gets back in the play and makes a spectacular interception, high point in the football right there, but huge play in the game. If Nick Foles completes this ball, I think we got a different story. All right. Nothing from that moment forward. Let's, let's dive into these highlights. Sticking with Drew Brees and the Saints, taking on red-hot Nick Foles and his magic carpet ride. Foles would open up the scoring in the first with the touchdown to Jordan Matthews. Eagles jump up 14-0 early. Everyone big excited. But the Saints would crawl back. Third quarter down four. Brees finds Michael Thomas in the end zone. He had 171 yards on the day. Eagles with a chance to win it down six driving. But Foles finds Alshon Jeffrey. And the ball went right through his hands. Jeffrey can't believe it. Saints win 20-14. to Here's their head coach, Sean Payton, after the game. I'm proud of those guys. I'm proud of that locker room. Um, they fought through a lot and, uh, you know, managed to get the win. And, you know, again, it's... Uh, these are tough games. I'll take that loss. That's on me. Let all my teammates down. City, city of Philadelphia, that's on me. I'll take that. You win through losses. You win through wins. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, all of us are going to learn from and we'll be better for. Um, I've talked a lot about, you know, my career in the NFL and the ups and downs. You're always learning. Um, and, you know, we learned a lot tonight. And it, it's tough, but we'll keep moving on. He's basically already a head coach, just with his <laughs> post-game comments. Cece, what was the key to the Saints' comeback in this game? Well, I think one of the things that's important is the breakdown out of the Alshon Jeffrey catch, no catch there at the end, the ball he dropped. Um, they had a zone route on where he was supposed to go up five yards and run a little smash route inside. If they're in man-to-man, -man, he comes out really hard and fast. If they're in zone, he's got to be able to slow down. As you can see, he's right there by the hash mark. He's supposed to catch this ball out right inside the numbers. So that route, I tell you all the time, Nick, 50, 55%, 60% of the interceptions. This one, the, this one is 100% on the And it's receiver. not because he dropped the ball. It's because of where he was and in a relationship to the defense. If it was man-to-man, -man, he should have been way in there running away from the defender. Then there wouldn't have been anybody back there to even catch the deflection. Against zone, he's got to go sit down right there to be able to make that catch. So that was the decisive play in the game. But there were a number of plays in the game. We talked about the Ertz, the, the, the underthrow, where they got the interception in the game. But I just believe that second half, because the momentum had already switched, that second half, first possession, where the Saints had the long drive that I have seen since I've been watching yeah. football. See, how about 120 yards on that drive? Because of penalties. Yes. Like they, I mean, they, they, they gained more than the full football field in that drive. It was, and it was really, I mean, they at that point had full control of the football game. Yes, and at that point, you could see the confidence in the Eagles, the magic for which they were doing. The Saints had regained that. In none of these the, the divisional games that we see the home team get off to a slow start, but the Saints game.
and the Saints were able to recover. Why do you think I, that was? Why do you think they the have the was biggest home start? field advantage? Their fans at no point will ever give up on the Saints because of their relationship. Because it's a, it's a strange season ticket base. Most of the people, because they just don't have the bill to afford, the bill to pay for season tickets, most of the season, they walk up to the game, 60% of the tickets, and buy them that day. Yeah, yeah. Now, you can't do that in the playoffs, but it is a love affair with a, team, with a team and a franchise that they never thought would win. But then came Katrina. Then came the block punt, mm -hmm. Drew Brees, Sean Payton. So they've changed the whole culture there. So it's just not it's a loud building. It's just not that they have a good because it's loud all the time. They've had some bad seasons there in New Orleans. But, man, the relationship they do have with those fans allows them to stay in the game. In Philadelphia, they were well, well represented as far as being at the game. But that, to me, was one of the critical moments because either team can win that game. But as you said, after that drive, the Saints were in complete control of the football game. All right, so let's, I want lots to break down here. One is the, the most critical play. This is the cruelty of sports now. Alshon Jeffrey in week 13 said, I have the best hands in the league in his career in the playoffs. Prior to that play, had been targeted 34 times, zero drops. And on that play, which by the way, speaking of cruelty, they, they didn't even have to run it. That, that play went off at 2.01. The clock was their friend at that point in time. If it hits the two minute warning, they're not in bad shape at all. But. The reality is the Saints for the last two years, or the Eagles, pardon me, every bounce has gone their way. It bounces in games they're not even playing in. The, the Minneapolis Miracle, they're not even in that game, but it went their way that the Vikings won and they didn't have to play the Saints last season. Yes. The, the, in a must-win game against the Houston Texans when they're down, Jadeveon Clowney gets a penalty on Nick Foles that supercharges that drive. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the double doink in yeah. the game last yeah, week. Right. And then Will Lutz. They, 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 Michael Bennett makes a great play. The biggest play of the game Lutz up to that point, and then Will Lutz misses the kick. But I thought the biggest sequence and was started right before the Foles interception. And they're up 14-0. They force a fumble on Drew Brees, and they have it. Like, they have it so much, the refs thought it was a, a recovery and then another fumble. But they don't fall on it, and so now it's a punt instead of you have the ball inside the 20, and then the Foles interception. But the reality is... The right team won because after the first quarter, this was a total and utter annihilation. In the first quarter, the Eagles had 153 yards, the Saints had 21, and it was 14 nothing Philly. The rest of the game, it was 399 yards to 97 yards. Huh. The Saints defense, what they did to this Philly offense in quarters two through four was as good of any as any defensive performance we've seen by any team all year. They shut them out and they shut them down. And that's why Drew Brees and the offense didn't have to be brilliant. They were very methodical. They didn't make mistakes after the first couple drives, but they didn't have to be perfect because that defense was spectacular after the opening two Eagles touchdown. How do you think Nick Foles played yesterday? I thought Nick Foles played pretty good, but you can't throw interceptions. Like you can't underthrow the Zach Ertz ball right there. Nick Foles, I like the fact that his understanding of football, where he throws it on the field, the different receiver he's throwing the ball to. So I think when you start evaluating Nick Foles, you have to look at, man, he understands the game of football, understands what coverages and stuff are trying to do. Turnovers ultimately are going to kill you. And at that time of the game, where Ertz, if he's able to make that completion right there, I believe the game is totally different. The momentum never gets flipped back over to the Saints. So that was a, cre a key part of the game. They became one-dimensional even though they had to lead, um, they wouldn't run the ball. And that became, ultimately, I knew that would be a problem. Saints defense, so you got to give a lot of credit that they were able to contain Nick Foles in that offense after that first quarter. All right, we'll talk much more about Nick Foles and what we see as the future for him coming up. But time now for Put a Great on it, sponsored by CarMax. Drew Brees, as we mentioned, had a great day. Went 28 for 38, 301 yards, two touchdowns, a pick in the win last night. Nick, put a grade on Drew Brees' game. Uh, you got to give him an A. Didn't panic at first, I mean, first play of the game goes about as poorly as one can. He throws an interception on the very first play before he really has a chance to get into the game. They're down 14 nothing. Didn't panic. I thought played really well throughout and his team won. So I give him an A. Yeah, started off with that pick. The reason why I wasn't worried about the pick was because he had Teddy Gann open for a touchdown. Underthrew him, couldn't get enough on the throw. Bounce his team back. Him, Sean Payton, undefeated. They're playing at home in the playoffs at 6-0. and A, A plus, whatever the professor here, Nick, wants to get. Right, right. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Got to take a break. Coming up.
What went wrong for the Cowboys in Los Angeles? That's next. This is First Things First. One of our behind the scenes people, guy we have a few nicknames from, I'm not going to say it publicly, Fifi, you know, I. <laughs>